Hi everybody, it's Dr. Sam Robbins. Now today's question is from Mrs. Wilson and she asks, what really causes poor circulation? Now what's important to know is that poor circulation isn't a condition itself. It's the result of other health issues. Now poor blood flow and circulation is one of the primary causes of a heart attack or stroke. And this is why it's so important for you to pay attention today. And this is because it can lead to hypertension and high blood pressure, hardening, and narrowing of your arteries and high cholesterol and plaque buildup. Now, the good news is that this can be reversed and avoided naturally without prescription medications, crazy diets, or exercise. And I'll reveal to you exactly how in a minute because this is ex exactly the problem my dad has had for many years. In fact, he had a stroke a few years ago and why I'm making this video to help you avoid the mistakes and the pain and suffering that we had to go through. But first, let's talk about some of the warning signs. Um, now, some of the warning signs that you that you may have circulation problems include uh, frequent uh, pain and cramping in your legs, uh, tingling or numbness in your hands and or feet, uh, tired, aching or weak legs and feet, uh, slow aching wounds, thickening toenails, varicose and spider veins, and cold hands. Now, let's talk about the causes. And there are several different causes of poor circulation, but here are the top five. Um, peripheral arterial disease, which is known as PAD, can lead to poor circulation in your legs, and it generally affects people over the age of 50. Now, PAD is a circulatory condition that causes narrowing of your blood vessels and arteries, which eventually decreases blood flow to your extremities and can result in pain, but more importantly, can cause uh, a heart attack or stroke. Now, another cause are blood clots, which block the flow of blood, either partially or entirely, and they can develop almost anywhere in your body. But a blood clot that develops in your arms or legs can lead to circulation problems, typically. Uh, next, we have varicose veins, which are enlarged veins caused by valve failure, and they're most often found in your legs. And these damaged veins can't move blood as efficiently as your other veins so poor circulation can become a problem. Now, your genes largely determine whether or not you develop varicose veins. Secondarily is a change in your hormones due to aging. And this is why women are more likely to develop them, especially after menopause, as are people who are overweight or obese. Um, another cause, major cause, is diabetes. Now, you may think diabetes only affects your blood sugar, but it can also cause poor circulation throughout your entire body. Now, people with advanced diabetes may have difficulty detecting the signs of poor circulation, and this is because diabetic neuropathy, which is nerve damage caused by prolonged exposure to high blood sugar, can cause reduced sensation in your extremities and feel similar uh, to poor circulation, but they're two different situations. And people with diabetes are also at an increased risk for um, atherosclerosis, high blood pressure, and of course, heart disease. And finally, obesity. You know, of course, carrying um, any extra pounds puts a burden on your body. And if you're overweight, uh, sitting or standing for hours will eventually lead to circulation problems. And being overweight also puts you at an increased risk for many other causes of poor circulation, including diabetes, varicose veins, and blood vessel problems, which we've already spoken about. So in summary, what's important to remember is, about all this is that poor blood flow and circulation is that it's a result of other health conditions, okay? And if left untreated, can lead to a heart attack or stroke, as I stated with my own father. Now, genetics aside, the change in your hormones due to aging is another major cause of poor blood flow, as is being overweight which can typically cause numerous health problems, as you may already know, diabetes being one of them, which further decreases circulation. Well, that's it for today. You know, I hope this video was helpful and gave you more clarity. And if you'd like more information about this topic, please subscribe to this YouTube channel because I'll be making more highly researched videos aimed at keeping your entire body and mind healthy so you can look and feel young. And if you'd like to discover how I dramatically improve my dad's blood flow, in less than 30 days without the use of harmful prescription drugs or following a restrictive diet, please visit the link in the description area below this video for additional information and helpful tips. As always, thanks for listening and have a happy and healthy day.